get in my Mr. Rogers get up, but <laughs> anyways, what's good everyone? It's MJO23Dan back with another video. So this video is about the five things that Nike and Jordan can change in 2020. So let's get started. But before we do that, this is your last look at the year 2019 and the pickups that I did for the year. If you guys have not seen that video yet, definitely check out the card and click on the link and see what are my thoughts on each of these releases that happened in the year 2019. So I guess it's not really change, it's more of how the brand can improve. So I always like to offer my words of encouragement for the brand and try to get the ideas and wheels spinning. So one of the things that I always bring up is packaging. And packaging as far as, I guess, signature models or retro models. So here's your signature model. So the signature boxes are always something different from your regular releases. Still, they're gearing it towards flight, just like the Air Jordan 33 and then even previous models as well. They didn't include any type of insert in there other than just say this cardboard piece, flimsy, but you know what, I would have really liked to see what they did with the Air Jordan 33 where they actually had like instructions on how to uh, lace up the shoe because that shoe was laceless. And they didn't include anything like that in here. Not even, you know, the type of technology that's in it, whatnot. But I always thought that was something cool that they would always include inside their signature models is just a brief overview of what the shoe is all about. Because, you know, even though there is stuff that's on the internet and you can look it up on Google or whatnot, I would still like a piece of like the history of the shoe or, you know, what exactly that is so that I can like pinpoint and just say, yo, yeah, this is what it was, you know, some years down the line. So typically like the collab stuff, uh, they did this with the Cactus Jacks. They did this with the Travis Scott Sixes. They made a typical Air Jordan 6 box, flip top, but they made it brown, you know, kind of, it is the vibe of Travis Scott. They made a red interior, but it's all blank. So I just feel like there is a story that you can continue telling in the packaging. Now, this one. So this one, they started around the tail end of 2018. And you can already see, it's just inspiration all throughout the box. You know, coming up from the Air Jordan 6, the inspiration of what was supposed to be early indications of the Air Jordan 11, the Air Jordan 2 right there with the poster, wing it. And I just feel like this is a true tribute to what retros are supposed to be. So you're telling a great story that this is a retro box, even though this was for the Air Jordan 3 uh, animal print, which I don't really see the connection with that and this box. So. That's why I always say year after year that there should be better storytelling or better packaging uh, with the shoes. But, you know, we got this also with the uh, Storm Blue and the Black Toe Union joints, the Air Jordan 1s. And that was cool too. But I would just like to see a little bit more effort, innovation, storytelling within the boxes and packaging of sneakers. You know, something I also brought up too last year was including leftover materials from shoes. So. Of course, there's going to be scraps upon scraps of things. So that's also something that you can probably like infuse in the box or make in, into some type of card. Just like what we did with, uh, you know, like collectible cards back in the day where you get like a jersey patch or something. Wouldn't it be really cool to have like a piece of Michael Jordan history like on a shoe or on a card just to commemorate the thing? Um, I've also brought up the, fa the fact that Michael Jordan is linked up with Upper Deck. Uh, upper deck and the card collecting world like infuse yourself with the shoe collecting world I think it would just open up Just a Pandora's box really of things to come because you're bringing in fans from that side of the world and bring them over to shoes, so that was my 
perspective back then because I used to collect collectible cards back in the day and it brought me over to sneakers. So if it wasn't for that and that aspect, I probably wouldn't be here. So Chicago, Air Jordan 1, All-Star Game, stuff like that. Like this shoe just brings you back. And it's one of the shoes that a lot of people are wanting in 2020 where a lot of the insiders say that this shoe is not releasing hopefully it does release sometime this year but who knows but air jordan one air jordan one has been a staple of uh people's collecting habits and uh energy releases and whatnot for for some years especially last year the Jordan 1 is probably one of the most popular shoes amongst sneakerheads to date. And I think it's really time to ID this thing. So I brought this up last year as well. The Air Jordan 1 is just something that is a blank slate. You can pretty much color any type of panels all over the shoe. But I also don't think it should be easy enough where people can create a Chicago colorway whenever they want, a royal. Air Jordan 1 whenever they want. I think there should be some restrictions. I think there should also be some type of, I guess, let people be creative with the shoe because you do have customizers that say, for example, the Bloodlines. Like there's a guy on Instagram, I forget his name, and he's been creating some great colorways with the Bloodline Air Jordan 1. And that shoe, along with say like the Laser Air Jordan 1 from years past, like those are one of the most customizable Air Jordan ones that people use and I just think that giving it into the hands of some aspiring creators creatives uh, to be able to create something that is you know like something for themselves an ID of some sorts I think that would be leaps and bounds like I think the brand should really test that market to see where people can go in creating a, a sneaker of that caliber so that they can continue making, I guess, uh, different colorways for, for, for the model in itself. Although that is ideal, that's like eventually what should happen because this is essentially the converse Chuck Taylor of Air Jordans that it just keeps coming out and out and out. And, um, you know, it's, it's time. So... However they can manage that, I, I think it would be awesome to see. You guys already know. I did a video on this. I want to talk about an incentive program. So obviously, people love when they're recognized by the brand, right? Uh, whether they're gifted something, a lot of people uh, were actually gifted this pack right here. And uh, to their degree, like they felt like they didn't deserve it. Although a lot of people that did receive this, they definitely deserved it. So whether your hard work is noticed, unnoticed, um, it's noticed. And the brand has eyes and ears everywhere. So uh, incentive programs. I think that would be awesome to see uh, where the people are spending their money, where the dollars are going. Uh, if you are an avid fan of Nike and Jordan, that there should be some type of rewards program for you just like Foot Locker has for their company uh, you spend you know uh, an X amount of dollars and you get $20 back Nike and Jordan they can afford that they have a great return policy when it comes to uh, their product and I feel like they can go a little bit more when it comes to people actually spending the dollars with them so a lot of people know that they're, they're, they're trying to do a more direct-to-consumer uh, type experience. So uh, we'll see. I mean, hopefully it'll eventually lead to that, but I really think that there should be some type of incentive program as far as like maybe, you know, in, even giveaways. Like it doesn't even have to wait until the end of the year. Like do it when somebody graduates like summertime would be an oper like a perfect opportunity for someone to like get a pair of air jordan 11s just like with the uh with the black cat or i think it was the the graduation pair of the air jordan 11 the cap and gowns you know that that would have been a great way for people to or have the brand celebrate people that have uh achieved greatness so you know obviously graduating from high school graduating from college getting your master's degree something like that 
and just recognizing people that are um, fans of the brand. So I think in doing that, it shows a little bit more appreciation for what people are spending their money on, their hard work, and stuff like that. So let's get to that. All right, and so what I brought about earlier with the packaging is collabs, and I did mention Upper Deck, but we did get these Funko Pops with the NBA and Michael Jordan, although it wasn't something that was directly relatable to Nike and Jordan because they couldn't even use the same type of shoes, even though it, it, it does look like they use the same type of shoes. They didn't because that stuff's not licensed, but you know, just uh, upper deck, like, you know, collaborating with the NBA. I think you guys are, it's time for you guys to get together with Nike and Jordan to create something awesome. So, uh, you know, just something like this with, with collabs, it doesn't have to be like toys. It could be like posters. It could be, you know, people getting back into uh, the card collecting game, but most definitely something with sneakers. So a lot of you guys remember the poster for the Black Cat Air Jordan 4 when it originally released as a retro. So there was a poster in there. It wasn't by Upper Deck or anything, but it was from the brand, you know, stuff like that. Um, I'm curious as to why that probably wasn't included in the newest retro that's supposed to release. But um, I think, you know, sometimes with those types of things, it's one of those things where they keep it to those people that originally had the set. So, a lot, you know, a lot of people are also upset, like, why didn't they just release the DMP6 along with the Jordan 11? Because that was a pack. Just release the pack. But the brand can make so much more money if they drop those shoes individually. So people are going to want want the 6 and people are also going to want the 11. Now, you know, packaging them two together, it's going to be a 500 plus you know pack whereas back then it was i believe like 295 or you know 300 bucks or something like that but you know they can make a lot more money if they separate the two and i know i haven't gotten to my sneakers yet and i'm supposed to be putting it away because i need to but the final thing i want to talk about is price so price is something that always comes up when it comes to nike and jordan releases so in particular with Jordan releases, I always said that the retro prices for them, you know, it's typically 190, right? And it's slowly creeping up. They're st starting to slowly go into the $200 range. I told myself a long time ago that if it starts getting into the 250 retail range or even close to 300, that's it. I'm done with sneakers. I you can you can find me on the nostalgia pages uh, on eBay trying to look for like older releases and stuff like that. Although it is pretty much getting hard to legit check things that are like you know just relatively recent. So I mean when I talk about that stuff, I like to talk about you know the mid 2000s because a lot of that stuff wasn't as good as it is now um, as far as like faking something, but. Um, prices definitely need to drop so something that was like 190 say like an Air Jordan 3 um, I feel like it should be about 175 an Air Jordan 11 you know holiday release 220 that is pretty expensive and it never goes on sale and you know Jordan and Nike know that they can make a lot more money if they just like just release it right in the in, in the 220 dollar range because people are gonna buy them up now funny to say that is because I don't really see anybody on the internet really wearing Jordan 11s like that they usually like to stash them away or like just cycle them through or resell them whenever they need to but it's like one of those shoes where you know people would rather wear an Air Jordan 1 people would rather wear an Air Jordan 3 or an Air Jordan 4 model so I don't know where people lie when it comes to that part and it's so crazy how you know the Jordan 11 really teeter-totters between marketing and nostalgia and people are just going crazy for it so uh, I'm going off on tangents here but uh, I did speak about also where is it time to change uh, what the holiday release is for December uh, you know every single year like I said with the uh, Jordan 1 something you can ID. I think it's really time because people are more gravitated towards uh, that sneaker model. But I mean, who knows? We'll, I guess, trust the brand to see what they decide to do. But this is your video. And so these are five things that 
uh, Nike and Jordan can improve on in 2020. What are your thoughts? Let me know down in the comment section below and uh, sound off. Let me know what you guys think. Again, if you guys want to follow me, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Also, subscribe to me here on YouTube. And, you know, appreciate the support. Thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, I guess I'll get to this now. And uh, I guess next time you see a video, it'll be all wiped out. And we're starting fresh for 2020. All right, guys. Take care.